Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and also our friends online. We wait uh, another three minutes. Maybe people still are coming because of our uh, um, previous session have been postponed a little bit. Okay, we, we will start at uh, uh, 3.35 on time. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for coming uh, here to our session, um, both uh, in situ and also online. Uh, yeah, dear friends, um, um, we here it, it will be the, be the, the session. To, we want to share some experience and progress, especially for the first observation activity in China, and also we have some co international cooperations uh, between China and Europe, and also China and Southeast Asian countries. And so uh, in this session, there will be five presentations. Uh, the first one presentation will be given by Professor Li Zengyuan. Um, and uh, Professor Li is, uh, comes from the Chinese Academy of Forestry. For the second one, second one will be given by me, myself. Uh, my name is uh, Pang Yong. And also for the third one will be given by uh, uh, Dr. Tian Xing. And so all of our three, we are come from the Chinese Academy of Forestry. So our first presentation we given by Dr. Zhao Dan. He's come from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. And also for our last presentation, we will be given by Dr. Huan Shuas. He's come from UK, actually, but we also have very close cooperation during the past years. So through these um, early uh, sessions of this uh, GFI meeting, we all know that uh, for the first uh, um, brings more and more attention, and uh, also people want to, to use some just special technologies, especially for the remote sensing data, to characterize the forest restoration, forest disturbance, and also degradation activities, both from for the amount of change and also some quality changes like uh, the, the quantitative uh, uh, parameters. Uh, so in, uh, in this session, we want to share some of the experience, especially for the, for the activities during China, both in the, in, and also in the, for the, from the, 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 the Chinese satellite data sources. So um, let's welcome Professor Li Zengyuan to give us first the presentation. Uh, we especially using the Chinese golfing satellite data for the forest mapping activity in China. So I will give. So thanks, uh, Professor uh, Pang. Also, ladies and gentlemen, good, good afternoon. Uh, here, and Pang Yong said I would like to, to give you some uh, ideas, I mean, about the forest and grassland mapping on national uh, scale. Also, uh, for me, I used uh, uh, Chinese satellites. We call the GF. GF means, uh, uh, the Chinese pinyin is Gao Fen. Gao Fen, I will mention later. <clears throat> that uh, several uh, pegs. First, as I mentioned, uh, this is the Gao Fen satellite uh, series. Uh, in the past 10 years, Chinese government launched uh, seven uh, GF satellites. Uh, GF, I uh, mean, Gao Feng, the meaning is high uh, spatial, high temporal, and high uh, spectral uh, satellite. This is the, uh, the meaning of the Gao uh, Feng. <coughs> uh, like here, so the uh, Gao Feng 1 and the Gao Feng 6, more or less, uh, more or less uh, same. I mean, that the uh, width is very, very wide. It's, uh, at eight, uh, eight, uh, 100 uh, kilometers. <coughs> Golfing 2 is a high uh, spatial. Uh, Golfing 4 is a, 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 a satellite, so it's a, 
I mean, the tempo is very, very high, even in uh, uh, seconds or uh, minutes. Uh, uh. So uh, also we have another uh, SAR satellite we call the uh, Golfin 3. Golfin 7 is the stereo mapping satellite. This is uh, uh, an amazingly uh, seven satellite. So I'm from the Chinese Academy of uh, This academy belongs to the National Forestry and Grassland Administration. So for me, it work only focus on our administration. So the duty of this uh, administration is uh, to manage forest, uh, grassland, wetland, even uh, direct resources. Uh, also, uh, separation of uh, of uh, wild uh, animal and plant resources. This is, uh, I mean, the duty of this uh, administration. So, in our uh, administration, we use a lot of satellite data. So, the satellite data is very important. <clears throat> so, go go back to my talk. I mean, the objective of my work is first to have a classification system. Then we use the Chinese satellite to mapping the forest and grassland on a national scale. <clears throat> also, we use a lot of uh, reference data. Here, I mentioned that for classification system uh, uh, construction. We used uh, some, uh, some uh, are the national standards, some are the industry uh, standards. Uh, this is for the classification system uh, constructing. <clears throat> uh, so for classification system, first level, we have seven types. Second level, we have 38 uh, classes. So here, uh, uh, here is, uh, I mean, the fourth, fourth, like here mentioned, the fourth land is fourth level. Uh, second level, there yeah, are uh, 10 classes, including caniferous, broadly mixed, uh, uh, mixed, uh, even uh, uh, shrubs, uh, bam bamboo, and mangrove also, and 10 classes. For grassland, uh, we have six classes, like here, mentioned at the fissure uh, grassland, swamp, shrubland. And natural uh, grassland with uh, high uh, coverage, uh, medium coverage, and low coverage, uh, three uh, classes. <clears throat> Wetland, we have uh, five classes. I mean, here, that mentioned, like uh, mangrove, Swamp uh, forest and uh, swamp uh, uh, and the uh, swamp uh, uh, shrubland with forest elements uh, we ca uh, categorize into forest land. Also for uh, uh, grassland, also swamp uh, meadow is the uh, uh, categorized into grassland. <clears throat> uh, here the desert sandy land there are six classes. Uh, the areas uh, including cultivated uh, land, uh, construction land, and uh, areas like uh, here may mention this is a uh, table for the second, uh, second, second uh, level. <clears throat> so, I mean, for this work, uh, we used the uh, Golfin 1 and the uh, Golfin 6, and I said this is uh, 60 meters uh, resolution, uh, multi spectral uh, satellite data. Uh, like here, I mean, the swords, the uh, width is uh, very, uh, very wide, eight, uh, uh, 800 kilometers uh, for year. 2015, we used about uh, 700 census. For year uh, 2020, we uh, used more or less about uh, 638 census. <clears throat> uh, in my work, 
I mean, we also use some uh, uh, supplementary uh, data, like here mentioned the national province um, boundary boundaries DM and also radius uh, types. Uh, we we use the data uh, like here that mentioned, uh, like radius uh, types. Uh, I mean to revise the primary uh, primary light types. <coughs> Uh, the method, I mean, for classification, uh, we used object oriented uh, with uh, automatic classification uh, approach. Also, I mean, manual uh, cooperation uh, to improve uh, classification result. Uh, we also used the so, Procedure it, uh, not uh, complex uh, footage the data preparation uh, 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 the segmentation. Uh, the important thing is the feature uh, optimize uh, 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 particular uh, classification then uh, post processing. So this is the roadmap for the uh, segmentation. <coughs> I mean, here that uh, first uh, is the uh, image uh, segmentation, then the uh, stratify classification. Uh, finally, we get uh, 38 uh, classes. <clears throat> uh, data pre uh, precision is very simple, important thing for radio, uh, radiometric correction and also, also rectification. I don't know. Segmentation, we use the multi uh, scale uh, segmentation. Here, that is the, uh, is the formula for original uh, heterogeneity uh, of the mode of that. Uh, this is the uh, formula. I mean, the segmentation, like here, mentioned the multi uh, scale. Uh, Matrix square, uh, I use matrix square to, uh, uh, I mean, for the different uh, segmentation square, it's uh, for different uh, uh, land types. <coughs> also, we plus, uh, we establish the uh, object layer network, this is very, very important. So, uh, I mean, when I mean the print segmentation scale cannot uh, effective uh, uh, separate di different uh, light ty uh, types, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, the scale uh, parameters to form a fine uh, of that uh, layer on top, uh, top of uh, previous one. In this way, the segment station result at multi scale can be uh, obtained under of that layer network. It uh, established <clears throat> feature selection in the L green we used uh, the several uh, se uh, separability and the stress uh, hold that to evaluate uh, evaluate the degree of uh, so association between two uh, categories on certain features. Uh, also, the uh, GM the detent uh, used for the uh, measure the separability between uh, categories. <coughs> now, here that several examples. This is the one is the no spectral OLAP, another one is the partially OLAP. Uh, 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 another one is a very heavy uh, uh, all up. <clears throat> so port processing the normally the very simple that I mean uh, the all up aids of uh, operating uh, operating blocks more uh, more than uh, blocks remove small parts. Uh, cutting uh, uh, administrative errors taken. 
top lo uh, topology of tiles and the standard rising art. Here, the, the, I mean, the, for the thematic information, tracing, and uh, here, that uh, we have several steps. First, uh, we get the uh, result for year 2015. Then, I mean, for 2020, 20, uh, 2020, we first to segment, uh, segment, uh, segment the, the index, I mean, for uh, 2020. Then combine, uh, combine with uh, the result, I mean, the map uh, produced in two, uh, for 2015 uh, to we use the change detection method to to update the uh, to uh, to some fifteenth map into to some twenty. This is my my idea. <coughs> so <coughs> that's uh, here. <coughs> I mean, for the most uh, sense results, uh, always we we have to. To I mean to to vary, validate the accuracy. So we also we use the a method we call the random stratified sampling method to to evaluate our result. Uh, here I mean the uh, the sam sampling um, population. It uh, is a uh, problem, so uh, uh, use this uh, this method to get a lot, lot of uh, uh, sample plots. Uh, first, we get uh, the sample uh, sample plots. Then, based on the random uh, point, uh, create a circle buffer with the area of uh, one hundred thousand. Uh, square uh, meters. <clears throat> then uh, I mean, they check the certain tensile of the image uh, pro, uh, property with this uh, circle, uh, uh, within this circle, I mean, with the information tracking uh, pattern uh, pro, uh, properties, then to calculate the uh, accuracy. <clears throat> So this is the monolith for the index of Golfen uh, uh, satellite. This is a result for year 2015. Here we have uh, 38 classes for the whole China, as I mentioned for our classification system. This is the, for year 2020 result. <coughs> Uh, uh, here, that uh, I mean, uh, every every land type has uh, one layer. Uh, here, uh, this is that uh, sort of uh, for the land type uh, distribution in China. Then the grassland uh, types, uh, type wetland type, also the desert type. Uh, also here the the. the Distribution of cultivated land and the construction land and the areas. <clears throat> we, as I mentioned, we used that uh, that method for the accuracy uh, analysis. Uh, so, year for year two thousand fifteen and the uh, year two thousand twenty, the accuracy. I mean, the more or less. About uh, eighty-five, even more than eighty-five uh, percent. That uh, this is the area in Chinese different uh, different uh, types. Uh, I mean, for the area of each uh, types. So this is my simple presentation. That method is not so complex. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you.
Okay, so thanks to our Professor Li's presentation. In Professor Li's presentation, he especially introduced and used the Chinese uh, satellite uh, constellations data to do the uh, forest, uh, forestry and uh, grassland uh, classification for the whole China. So it's, uh, I, I also think for this uh, community, it's also a very good compensation because here in people talk much about uh, for the data from US, from European, and also from some uh, um, some other constellations, um, but I think in, um, uh, during the past years, some other countries also have good uh, geospatial data uh, fund, uh, fundamental uh, facilities like China, like Brazil, they also launch a lot of, lot of satellite. I think now it come to questions. So first we go to the questions uh, from the, 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 the audience in the room, then we go to line. <laughs> yeah. That's a, one thing I would like to mention for, I mean, uh, Golfin 1 and the Golfin 6 satellite data, we shared already for the, uh, for GEO. Yeah, okay, that's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, you first go to in front and then to the, and to the back. Uh, Professor Lee, thank you very much indeed. That was a really interesting presentation. And the, the Galfin uh, satellites are, are very impressive, very impressive spatial resolution. Um, I, I had a, a couple of questions, if, uh, if you don't mind, please. Um, the, the first really is, um, of course, China is a very large country, and uh, your, your climate and your, um, your land cover classes are, are very diverse across the, the country. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe I didn't quite understand, uh, but I was I was wondering whether um, do you have do you need to uh, stratify your algorithms for classification according to the the climatic types across the, the country, or are you able to to apply um, algorithms which are valid across the whole of China? Uh, I mean, normally for the Indians we use the in North Korea we normally use summer. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the data uh, uh, in summer for South Korea normally in winter, yeah. because in winter the clouds is not not so so much. Mm. Also, for each year we we get a lot lot of uh, images. We we select uh, normally the how to say uh, cloud free. Eh? How to go back? Hmm. Now here, we for each year we get a lot of uh, images. We selected uh, more or less like uh, cloud-free images we used. So in fact, you've you've already anticipated my my second question, which was asking about uh, the the winter and the the summer imagery. Um, now you were speaking about the, the cloud cover um, uh, in, the, in the south. Well, I come from the UK and in Britain, and the cloud cover is a big problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. Us. Um, what is the, the temporal frequency of the, the Galpin uh, satellites? Uh, two satellites, I remember, about three days. Because the two satellites, I mean, the 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 uh, is very very wide. It's hundred kilometers. So every three three days we can get get one uh, full uh, coverage. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. I apologize. I arrived a bit late, so maybe you have covered this, but I now work for geo for y but before that, at the beginning of my career, I did a lot of mangrove research. So I saw one of your maps that you mentioned wetlands, and I'm just curious to, to know, when you did map of forestry, does, where does mangroves fit for you based on the forest definition? Because we know based on height and also percentage of cover, they could be included in being reported on their wetlands or being reported on the forestry. So where does it fit for you and what what techniques did you use? Because honestly, it's not the easiest. Uh, yes. Out, out, of the blue, out of the blue carbon world is not the hardest ecosystem to map because it comes seagrass, but mangroves could be challenging by themselves. So I'm just curious how you did it. Thank you. Yeah, 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 really a question. 
I mean, that's for the definition of forty in China. Between China and the FAO, a little bit different. In China, I mean, the coverage is uh, zero point three in the forty. Uh, FAO, I remember that uh, zero, uh, zero point two. So others, the more is the same. That's I mean, as you mentioned for. Uh, mangrove, yes, mangrove is, is really uh, different. But here, here uh, for mangrove, we have one class for mangrove. This is the description for, uh, I mean, the definition for, for mangrove for it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, really. <laughs> Some classes, I mean, the accuracy is a little bit okay. Some are not, not so good. Right, especially with the amount of imagery you can use due to the reduced, I mean, with the cloud cover that you're dealing, especially in the coastal areas, then the chance of, of producing the high, high quality data is, 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 is challenging. Yeah, we yeah. try this in tropical islands and, and yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not straightforward task. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, yeah, thank you. So, any more questions? So, it's when the questions online? Or? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we are on time. So, let's move on. Okay. Okay, thank you, <laughs> Professor Lee again. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, also maybe for the general information, the professor mentioned that uh, currently for the Chinese uh, GF1 and GF6 data has already been shared internationally and the GU umbrella. So, and also I think for the GFI audience, maybe you also can access such data. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice <laughs> for the, um, yeah, for the further um, um, transparency or, or more work. Okay, so nextly I will um, give my presentation to you. Yeah, first I will share my presentation. Okay, so next I would share some of uh, uh, our uh, work related to the first uh, restoration projects, ecological restoration projects. So uh, we all know that during the, the, the past years for the, for, the, for the trees, you know, keeping change, but how to use the remote sensing data to characterize this change, you know, both these uh, uh, disturbances for the, uh, for the degradation and also for the uh, forest ecosystem restoration. So uh, my, my presentation will be uh, contents to introduce some general information about the, the, the ecological restoration pro programs in China, and then, for, uh, then followed by two typical for, uh, forest re uh, ecological restoration projects, you know, how we use remote sensing data to characterize uh, the, its benefits for forest uh, resources. And yet then followed by a brief summary. In fact, during the past, uh, in China, we, uh, we have, uh, uh, over a large scale, we, we, we have contributed, uh, we have uh, carried out nine main ecological programs. Here I showed from the first one, it's a natural forest um, protection project. In the, in, in the first uh, um, in picture shows the, the area is range. You, know, you can see that especially in the northern, northeast part and also in the central part, which is mainly in the in the two main rivers regions of the Yangtze River and the Huanghe River regions. 
And also for the second one, is the three North Forest Shield Belt project, many in the in, in the in the dry area. And for the third one, is uh, area we surrounded the Beijing area. You know, during in the last uh, 1990, uh, 1990s, it's the sandstorm and uh, ecological degradation is uh, get worse and worse in China. So the China government has started for the Beijing Tianjin Sandstorm Source Control Project, which you can see. In, in, in the third picture, uh, you can, that is for the surrounding the Beijing area, especially in the in the in the north part of Beijing, right, where for the for the sandstorm storm comes from, and for the for the fourth one, the, the the conversation of cropland to to forest program. This is for the main cropland areas uh, provinces that have this program. Then for the fifth one is the shared belt construction project of the Yangtze River Basin and also for the Zhujiang uh, River Basin. And then for the uh, seventh one is for the uh, yeah for the seventh uh, seventh one is for the, uh, the conversion of gra grazing land to grassland conversation and then for, followed by the ecological protection uh, protection and construction in the headwaters of the of the the the, the, the three rivers man, mainly in the Tibet Plateau area in the of Qinghai area and also for the last project is uh, the controlling of the cast uh, cast rocky identifications mainly in the south uh, west part of china so here i mainly focus on the two projects because time is too limit i will focus on the um, natural forest plantation project and also for the beijing tianyin sandstorm uh, source control project uh, so uh, overall for the for all of the in, in these ecological projects with for the main First, uh, uh, restoration uh, objective is to try to prevent the 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 the, the degradation of the ecological environment, or to protect the biodiversity and to restoration vegetation, yeah, etc. I think the most similar we, as the UN started for the uh, for the first uh, restoration since uh, the last year, because we also we can see that all of these projects they have some overlaps. Especially, I mean, especially even the, for some uh, counties, they even have like a five pro ecological restoration projects. So it is difficult, you know, to uh, to uh, to use remote sensing data to characterize them uh, separately. So I think this issue we also discussed yesterday in the in the in the plenary meeting conference. So for the such ecological project or even our UN project, you know, we also, there might be some overlaps too. Um, and also for the main activities, try to, we try to ban the logging activities, try to convert the cropland over hilly area to forestry and to build a new natural reserves area and then to, to plant some new trees, especially for the ecological uh, um, consideration purpose. So next, I will try to take just uh, two ecologic projects uh, to see how we use remote sensing data to characterize these uh, uh, projects uh, effects on our forest resources. Uh, for the data we use, they used to be using the MODIS product, the Lancet data, the uh, uh, Sending Node 2 data, and also for the Chinese golfing satellite data here, we mainly use the 1, 2, and 6. We also using some airborne data of urban LIDAR and urban hyperspatial data for training and for validation for some uh, specific areas. For the indicators for remote sensing uh, data, we generate the forest coverage and the fractional vegetation coverage over forest areas, also the MPP, also the carbon sequestrations. For the methods we use in for the general for the change detection and the comparisons between the areas in and side of the, the project and then do the trend analysis because it's uh, like we have a long time series remote sensing data we can do the do the the the, the trend analysis 
here it shows you know how it for the for the large area uh, how we do this uh, using the remote sensing data we 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 just uh, tile and create tiles for the whole china uh, in fact we we for each tile contains 2.1 degree by 2.1 degree so we try to bring all the available remote sensing data uh, together and then do the pixel level based image composition for the cloud free composition especially we uh, improve the this method uh, especially considering for the local uh, forest phenology characteristics. That means we try to characterize the, the, the green season peak data have the priority to do this uh, cloud-free composition. Now after that, we try to integrate, to bring all the uh, available um, uh, land cover classifications and try to improve them and for the uh, both spatial and the time consistency temporal consistence um, for the for the ecological uh, areas and here we also try to think you know it is, it is difficult for large areas uh, ecological program so how do we how how can we do these uh, evaluations so we we try to compare it for the inside and outside and that means for the areas for the inside of um, 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 forest ecological program and outside these try to make them comparable then both the domestic and also abroad in a typical international basins river basins like here we see with this is the armor basin this is in the russia and in the northeast of china and this the yellow basin is uh, uh, bordered to, to the china and, and north korea and also we have the, the Mekong, uh, Mekong River Basin also in the southwest of China and the uh, south, southeast countries, several countries there. And also uh, several other international, uh, international river basins. We try to make them comparable. This is for the specialty. So for the temporary, we also try to use like even longer time series data, try to comparison before and after the implementation of these ecological pro projects. Yeah, this is for the, how we do for the whole natural resources, uh, uh, natural forest restoration program. So here you can see that mainly in the, for the projects, mainly in the northeast of China, uh, northwest, and also in the two uh, central part of China, that's the, 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 the Yangtze River and, and, and the, the Huanghe River up basins. So we, we, we generate this uh, special and uh, temporal consistent data, then we can do this uh, multi temporal um, and, uh, comparisons and, uh, and, uh, and uh, analysis. Here we can show that you know, how we do the image, cloud free image composition. These compositions uh, the, from covered from the, 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 the project started in 2000 and 2010 and 2020. All of these data we try to consider for the uh, uh, um, local um, trees phenology to make them more comparable. And then we can see that how the forest changes at, from, from the forest coverage areas for the, each area. You can see that how many forests have been increased. This is for the, for the, from the, the, the amount of point of view. Then furtherly, we use the fraction of vegetarian cover to do the comparison. So there are how many uh, forests have been increasing the, uh, qualitatively from the, 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 the coverage fraction uh, view. Then further on, we can do this trend analysis also for this, for the different areas. You can see that, that for the different areas, as is mentioned in the northeast part of China and some other different of these region, uh, forest ecosystem regions, you can see that it's uh, uh, for most of the regions, the overall, uh, overall half, um, um, overall half forest that have the, the, the significant increasing for the fractional cover. So also for, as I mentioned, you know, we also can do some comparisons, you know, before, uh, before the, 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 the project, uh, project start. For them here as a project start since uh, 2000. So we, we, we go back furthermore. We do, we use the data from 1986 to, to 2018. So we can com do comparisons, you know, how the forest loss area happens how the, and also for the, how the forest gain area happens. And so we can seek the, um, 
you know, it's pretty, pretty a clear um, trend is uh, that in the, for the first loss area, it's get decreasing the, uh, roughly about 2000. Actually, actually, it's 1998. It started from this, for this northeast of China. So this this pro project started from in 1998, and then also also for the first gang activities. Also, it's uh, uh, it's actually tried to keep pretty stable in uh, previous 1998. But after that, you can see it moves to a higher level. So that means it also can give us some uh, some information. You know, it's also we, we use a longer time series, remote sensing time series data can character, characterize this phenomenon. Then further, we do the comparisons according to a different ecological zone. We try to compare, you know, for the uh, areas in inside of this project and outside. We also, we can see here actually in the left bar, it shows for the, for the inside of the project, the right bar is outside. We also, we can see that for the, for the, for the, for the green ones, you see that it's a significant increase. Here we can see that it's also generally for the inside of the, 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 the project area, we have much more for the increase. Yeah, this is similar. We also we both do the FVC and the MPP comparisons. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, for this one, it's, we do the comparisons for the international river basin. And again, this is in the left side. It's in the uh, it's in the river basin uh, uh, within China, and uh, for the right side is outside of China. So it is uh, comparable, but for some areas is. Uh, you know, if a China areas it gets better for some areas, some river basins even even for the for the for the neighbor countries get better. But we are still working on this, try to figure out what's the you know try to get more inform reference information for the analysis. Yeah, and also for the desertification control, you know, for the uh, Beijing surrounded areas, this area, we, for, similarly, we also doing uh, for the land cover and uh, the MPP and the AI comparison stuff. But uh, furthermore, we also comparison for this, like annually product, and then we use them considering for the, uh, for the, for the local uh, climate variables like precipitation, temperature, etc. We try to separate for the natural uh, driving forces with the with the 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 the, the ecosystem pro restoration project uh, 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 efforts. So, but overall, you know, in this area, we 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 are, we are trying to separate them, them the, for the for the different uh, driving forces. Here we can see that for the uh, overall for this actually this uh, this like this one this yellow color actually shows for the for the uh, uh, contribution many contributions from this uh, 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 restoration um, project. So overall, it's roughly is about uh, uh, forty percent for this uh, for the ecological um, uh, restoration project contributed to the to the increase. So it's, uh, here is a brief summary that it was a remote sensing data set you know, to pro provide um, 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 a good data source for the evaluation for the, for the, uh, for the um, ecological restoration programs. And uh, in general, you know, both for the amount and also for the quality are increasing since the, 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 the implementation of this natural forest project protection project and also for the Beijing Tianjin Sandstorm uh, Source Control Project. Uh, so that means it's, uh, we are beneficial from the uh, forest uh, restoration programs. But more systematically evaluations are still needed you know, to do the integration, um, ground measurements, and also with uh, more remote sensing um, observations. Especially we can use more quantitative in indicators to do this evaluation. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so any questions I would like to, to do? Yeah. Okay, please. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Pang. Uh, I have one question um, regarding, you, you mentioned you uh, 
to exclude the uh, uh, natural influence from the ecological restoration. How do you do that? Yeah, in fact, uh, for this part of work I've been done by one of our um, uh, PhD students, they're using the um, 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 a geolog uh, geographical model called the geodetector. For using that model, they can you can uh, in make uh, make the the all the potential variable, potential drivers, you know, as uh, and make them specially. Then to 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 put them, then then they will just run. Uh, they just run out of variables like randomly. Try to 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 find which contribute much more. Yeah, yeah, and, and also for such method, they also are open source uh, tools. So you quantify those variables and then you do some statistical model to uh, the importance of these variables? Uh, yes, it's uh, simply it is, uh, yes, but in the back, uh, inside the, 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 the model, they're also considering both statistically also for the geo variability. They also call it for the, for the, for the uh, like a geolocation or area surrounding that. Yes, they have, uh, they have, uh, a kind of uh, complicated considerations for the models, for the variables, even individual variables or the several variables, they have like uh, intersections to do it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Pan Yong. Uh, mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was wondering, so you, you presented a, a really nice comparison of uh, using remote sensing data of the, the impacts of the, the protection and also the conversion uh, initiatives um, compared with uh, similar sites which weren't part of the, the initiatives. And um, what I was wondering is um, how are the areas identified um, that are part of these initiatives? Do you also use um, remote sensing data to, um, to, to classify, to identify those those areas that will be suitable to, to be protected, for example? Uh, you mean to, to how to, how to find these um, comparable uh, sites, right? Uh, to, to actually identify which areas will be part of the, the protection programs or the conversion programs. Okay, so actually, data yeah, data. actually it's a perfect question. This is what we, what we are doing since two years ago. Because during the early stages, as I mentioned, for such a forest restoration program, it, uh, uh, it starts in some in 1970s, but um, uh, more started in about 2000. At that time, both for the GIS and also remote sensing data, we don't have so accurate uh, data set available, also tools. So at that time, it's pretty uh, general consideration. So, okay, this several provinces or along the some of over hundreds of counties will be included for the program, for the ecological program. But definitely at that time, they don't have the specific area for the polygons. So now we are trying to bring back to use the remote sensing now, try to include the, the previously ecological efforts, try to put them on a higher resolution remote sensing data than to, to reconsiderations. But as I mentioned, that since uh, 2020 in China for the each new ecological program or even for the new efforts within the previous uh, project, ecological project, we need to use, uh, to consider them very specifically. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Tom. Thank you, Professor Pang. Um, firstly, thank you for the presentations. It's, uh, it's really, quite impressive work. It's, um, I'm very glad you came and, uh, and presented on this. This question may have partially been asked, but just wondering um, how successful you have been in, I guess, communicating your findings and results to decision makers, policy makers, uh, land managers. How successful have you been in, in getting your data used to drive change in, in how, how land is, is managed in China? So the, the, the use and the uptake of of your, of your data for land management. How successful have you been? 
Okay, so far for our um, for this part of the work is mainly being used for the for uh, for, uh, for the government purpose. They used this to evaluate how they are successful or they are where are the drawbacks in these previously ecological programs. Um, as I mentioned before, with Jackie's questions, uh, currently we are trying because for the remote sensing data, you know, it just gets better and better. So currently we can get that goes to very specific regions. So now for the so currently uh, for the forest restoration project design and also for the carry cloud, we are starting to 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 talk and to service to to serve for the local uh, stakeholders. Because previously, you know, we only for, have have data over like a Lancet or even Madison. You know, it's, it's difficult for the individuals. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for yes, your sir. presentation. I have a question regarding the data that you used. Do you think there is an option to use different sets of data in order to be able to extract information about the species distribution that? later being linked to and have a better understanding of if not only we're mapping that there's more forest which is good right but we are getting even deeper understanding are we increasing biodiversity when we're increasing the amount of forests and biodiversity of a broad aspect here of tree I mean, um, distribution as well as wildlife and all is there any way to use different data one, I mean, this is a large area, I understand, but for the protected areas, maybe trying hyperspectral in order to be able to extract the different signals into what different species might be coming back. And then later on, you know, identifying are these species leading to a higher biodiversity on the ground, which I mean, being now it, it, this GeoFOI plenary, we would like to also I mean, not talk only about more forests, but what do these forests support? How are we actually measuring for increasing biodiversity? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yes, this is also very interesting, and also we are trying to discriminate some of them. In fact, we already do, did some of the work, but only for some very specific area. Because for large area, it's difficult to get, uh, as I mentioned, get a good data set previously. Maybe since like since uh, five years ago, we start getting more and more hyperspectral data and uh, more multispectral data. You know, to, we, we can do now, but for previously, it's difficult. So yeah, this is for something maybe in the future we get more and more chance to do so. Uh, yeah, but this is definitely very important. Actually, for some of the ecological restoration program in China, we have some experience. It's not that good because during the past, we put a lot of efforts, but to plant too many uh, for mono species for large area. So also get some uh, some disadvantages and get some licenses for the forest uh, for the trees pathogen and the intersects. So now, it's, uh, yeah, we also need to consider. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a very, very important indicator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Professor, uh, I want to ask you if the mangrove is include or what is gonna be included in the restoration project in China or in different programs. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, in fact, in, in, in China, for the mongrels, is we, uh, I, I think it's just get more and more uh, attention during recent uh, several years. Yeah, during recent several years, they, they, yeah, we, we launched several programs along, uh, along the, 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 the coastal areas that put more, more, more attention on the mongrel forest. Uh, but it's also very, very challenging to use remote sensing because uh, uh, in, in China, for the, for the mongrel forest, uh, it's uh, only it's like already approaching its north edge. We, our mongrel forest not grows that far, uh, uh, that tall. It's not over very large areas. So yeah, yeah, there are some problem uh, programs, but only very locally because we only have a small percentage for the uh, geospatial. Uh, distribution. Okay, so thank you guys. I have to move on, but I will stay here. We can come back later. <laughs>
Dr. Chen Xin. Dr. Chen also, uh, he's my colleagues, also comes from the Chinese Academy of Forestry. So during the past, he, Professor Chen, also, uh, uh, um, he also is uh, leading several projects about the international corporations. So I think it's also a good opportunity to share with uh, our GFI audience. Yeah, please. Okay, thank you, Dr. Pang. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I will give a uh, brief introduction about uh, this project. Oh, sorry. Okay, recently benefits from the continuous funding from the, uh, the, the, the Ministry of uh, Science and Technology of China and APFNET and the GOVN uh, program. China has been uh, making ever greater contribution to GO or, and uh, the GFOI. So just as uh, uh, Professor Li uh, mentioned, we uh, recently, during the last decade, we <coughs> have launched a lot of EO data set, uh, the EO satellites, I I including the uh, Chinese Gulfen uh, uh, satellites. So this picture, uh, the actually the Gulfen uh, images with uh, 16, mit uh, 16 meter uh, resolutions the global mosaic. So uh, in, uh, recently, uh, more advanced uh, satellites will be or, or have launched, uh, for example, the, the territorial ecosystem carbon monitoring satellite and uh, the, the, the Lutang uh, one, it's uh, the Alabama sun, uh, will be launched soon. So uh, I would like to talk something about the signal uh, EU corporations. Uh, in 2003, uh, the, 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 the most uh, and the ESA decided to launch a large scale cooperation project in remote sensing and, uh, and EO, uh, other EO observation. We call that as a dragon, uh, dragon program. So now dragon, uh, since the kickoff in 2004, uh, dragon now is, uh, uh, 19 years old, and now it's Dragon 5. So Professor Li is uh, Chinese uh, coordinator of this program. So in Dragon 5, you can see in the, uh, in the uh, right corner, that's a totally uh, 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 734 scientists from uh, 213 uh, institutions uh, uh, joined this program. So from 2004 to uh, uh, 2019, actually, uh, most and the ESA uh, sponsored the Dragon uh, Annual Symposium in tens, one year in China, one year and the next in Europe. And uh, uh, one week uh, training course have been uh, carried out since the uh, kickoff and uh, till now it's about uh, more than um, 1,200 young scientists have been trained. Uh, interestingly, uh, two uh, European uh, partners uh, won the uh, China highest uh, international cooperation awards. So based on the, uh, on the dragon, on the framework of the dragon, uh, based on good uh, cooperations in forest monitoring, and we <clears throat> we decided to 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 uh, apply the the most uh, international cooperation project funding. Actually, we successfully got the uh, the, the, the funding. So the uh, the second topic is uh, about uh, general introduction of this project. So this project actually uh, concerns the GOI's uh, uh, requirements. And uh, the uh, state, uh, state of the hard art and the problems and the uh, trends. For example, uh, GFY uh, requires or needs uh, fully coverage of the remote sensing data to, 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 to do the uh, annual forest monitoring. But uh, currently, only the Landsat and the Centello uh, was, uh, was the main uh, resource. So there could be uh, some uh, data gaps. So the challenge is how to combine this uh, data set with the Chinese government uh, data to uh, generate a, 
uh, how to say, intensive data set to fill the uh, uh, data gaps. So for forest type uh, discrimination or disturbance uh, detections, uh, the, the, the high resolution and the, the, the automatic method depending on the small samples, for example, the AI uh, technology, AI uh, or, or deep learning uh, method uh, were, 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 were performed. So, so for first the parameters reversing uh, retrievals uh, under the various scenarios. Uh, so, the how to generate uh, accurate what to work uh, forest uh, mapping a uh, map uh, is all of interest. <clears throat> so, the the cooperation project, namely, uh, is uh, uh, the name is the. Uh, Cooperation project between China and Europe in Earth observation on forest monitoring technology and the demonstration applications. So, uh, as I, I, I mentioned, it's uh, supported by uh, China most. So, it uh, concerns the key issues the current poor robustness and the low spatial and temporal resolution of regional forest remote sensing uh, products. Actually, it aims to support GFI capacity building and product service for continuous observation for the regional forest resources. So it involves four key te techniques. The first one is harmonizing the Chinese Golfan and the ESA Sentinel service satellite observation, including the Golfan 1, Golfan 6 with the Sentinel 1, Sentinel and the Golfin uh, uh, Sentinel 2 uh, and the Golfin 3. So the second one is the first type of identification and the change and the disturbance detection technologies using multi module characteristics. So the third one is the extraction of forest vertical structure information and the forest biomass incorporating multi frequency SAR. The, the, the last one is the estimation, uh, estimation of original forest biomass based on LIDAR and optical multi-angle uh, stereo observation, uh, such as the, 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 the uh, Golfin 7 uh, satellite. <clears throat> uh, then we will build uh, uh, a developer platform we, uh, based on this uh, uh, technology and to, to do the uh, forest monitoring based on multi-source observation data. And we will uh, use this platform to do the application demonstration over China, the two sides in China, one in North, uh, North, West, uh, North East and uh, one in South West. And three, uh, three, three areas from, uh, from Europe, for example, French uh, Guiana, uh, Kelton Park in the UK, and uh, West Gatland in Sweden. So the uh, uh, expected uh, achievements, uh, our project will generate uh, one set of the method and guidelines based on the four key tech uh, techniques. And we will build a monitoring system, maybe in English, and to use this uh, system to do the, the, the demonstration. So that's our team. Uh, actually, uh, we have, uh, uh, it involves uh, seven institutions, and uh, you can see uh, Dr. Huang is here, <laughs> and uh, we have uh, four Chinese, uh, four, four institutions from Ch Chinese, uh, China, and uh, three from the Europe. So I would like to talk something about the technical, uh, te 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 technical issues. The first one is harmonizing Golfin and Sentinel-1, uh, Sentinel-2. You know, uh, Golfin has a similar uh, uh, special resolution to Sentinel-2, but it has a larger image with uh, wide uh, than the Sentinel and uh, even the Landsat. So, uh, uh, harmonizing the Golfin-1 and, uh, and 6 with the Sentinel could help to increase the, the, the observation frequency. So that's a different, we, we found that the only a little difference of the simulated spectral Reference, uh, reflectance uh, was found between these two, uh, two, uh, two sensors. So the second one, we would talk about some, um, some job about uh, fusion of UAV and TLS point cloud data. You know, in China, we, uh, the, the LIDAR has been more and more frequently uh, uh, used to do the forest inventory 
uh, fresh in event amendments. So uh, uh, we, we know whatever uh, uh, UAV or TLS, uh, TLS cannot get uh, uh, the, 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 the complete forest structure parameters. So we do this uh, job to, to how to say, like rebuild the, the, the structure of the, the individual trees. So that's very good for the, how to say, to the calibrating for the validation for our uh, uh, satellite uh, uh, products, rather than in, in the labor uh, measurement, because uh, use LIDAR, we can get a, a, a small, small area or very small regional forest uh, uh, information, we, we can call it as a true uh, ground truth. So beyond this, we also uh, combined the, um, uh, the forest structure uh, features with the UAV images to do the individual tree uh, spe uh, species discrimination. So we use the uh, um, learning method and very higher uh, result we got. It, uh, the, the, the classification accuracy is more than 98%. Uh, uh, so for the forest uh, disturbance, uh, disturbance detection, our Europe partners develop uh, some method to, uh, for monitoring the European spruce bark uh, beetles. So early detection and the large area mapping uh, 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 using the Sentinel-2 images uh, were, were, was developed. So we also do, uh, did uh, the, the long term uh, first determinants in the our test site in the north uh, north east China in Genghe. So uh, uh, we found that over the last uh, thirteen years, forests have been disturbed uh, to the extent of more than twelve percent. And uh, uh, but uh, the, the disturbed area generally showed a trend toward reduction, especially after the commercial logging uh, activities was uh, was was how to say was bound in 2000, uh, 2015. So here are some uh, 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 relationship between the forest disturbance and the the the, the main factors. So for the uh, forest height extraction method, we use <coughs> we utilizing the difference in forest penetration between long and short waves uh, in shock. You can see we know the, we, we, we can use a DSM subtracted DTM to get the forest height. Now, but uh, the criti uh, critical issue is how to uh, how, how, how to get the high, uh, high accurate uh, Highly accurate DSM and DM. The first one is uh, how to get the, 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 the high accurate, uh, highly accurate DSM. So we use, uh, uh, we de developed a uh, multi level model to do the DSM composition. So you can see after the composition, the, the DSM accuracy improved a little bit. And also you can combine with the, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, compared to the, the first uh, uh, height, uh, uh, height extraction result. So you can find that we, with a new development uh, method, uh, P1 and uh, with uh, the, 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 the X, X, uh, X, X band uh, DTM. So the result also is uh, improved a, a, a lot. So here is uh, uh, some uh, illustration for I'd say to estimate the canopy height uh, using our China uh, China spaceborne lidar and uh, and, and uh, multi <coughs> angular uh, stereo images. So here uh, we, we combine with the, the UAV and the and the album uh, album images uh, album result. We can find this very very good result. And uh, here is another case in the Genghe uh, site. So we can also find that we got a reasonable uh, 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 result. So finally, I, I, <coughs> I would like to talk something about our uh, uh, other activities. Actually, during the past four years, uh, under the leading of the Professor Lee, we, uh, we, 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 come, uh, we carry out the, the several uh, simultaneous space on album ground-based remote sensing campaigns. You can see the site distribution in the China maps. 
and to 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 validate the Gaufen uh, uh, products. So here is our uh, uh, how to say domi uh, our our, our uh, domestic uh, sensor. I mean the the uh, album sensor, including multispectral lidar, hyperspectral, and the CSAR. Here is some commercial uh, uh, UAV sensor. Okay, uh, in 2000, uh, 2020, uh, in the uh, uh, Yunnan province, southwest China, so we did a lot of field work, uh, including the DOM, DS, land cover, land use, <coughs> land use, forest, soil moisture, water color. And here is uh, uh, another test site in the Genghe in Mongolia in 2022. So here is our uh, EU partners that feel the measurements. So finally, I would like to see uh, uh, what we have. We have a good guidance on the performance of carbon peaking and carbon neutrality goals. So four functional and technical link connect forest observations. So understanding organization, uh, organization on China EGO because uh, most uh, recently uh, provide more and more funding to support the China EGO. So uh, in this terms, international cooperation mechanism and the platforms, so we firmly believe China can contribute more to the JFY through our joint effort. Thank you, that's all. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Tian's presentation. It's a very good time. So yeah, questions in the audience. So any questions? Okay, check in. I think that the, the prospects of the, the multi-angular uh, satellite from Galvin 7 and uh, comparison with uh, airborne LIDAR, as you were, you were saying, but, um, but also waveform LIDAR from, from space like, like JEDI is uh, really interesting. Is, um, is this something that you have, have done for the study sites, you, you shared some examples from Sweden and from uh, from China. Um, do you? Um, There's what? Uh, Gulf and Seven, the, uh, the multi-angular to uh, canopy height from uh, from that. Have you been able to to do some comparisons for the, uh, yeah for uh, for the different countries? This one, I no, this one, I think. So we 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 use uh, the the light data and the uh, stereo uh, images to how to say you use light to detect the the on the store uh, on the story parents. Okay, use the uh, stereo images to get the DSM so that we get uh, some the canopy height by sub, uh, uh, subtract the DSM to the DTM. So we use this data, uh, the, the data is from Golfin 7. You know, yeah. So the, the prospects of being able to uh, to do this from space, so from Gulf and Seven is is very interesting. Yeah. I, I was wondering if you've uh, also been able to compare with uh, JEDI data. JEDI. Mm -hmm. JEDI. No, we didn't do, do, do this. But uh, recently, we also launched another a similar, uh, but more advanced uh, the, 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 the satellite we call it as the, this one. It have more angles and uh, with, uh, let's say, the, the more uh, power for the data. So uh, uh, maybe next in uh, uh, in future we can, um, how to say, to incorporate this with GDI with uh, several uh, uh, several lidar satellite data. But currently we only use that uh, Golf and Seven uh, satellite data. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. So yeah. Thank you again, Dr. Chen. So let's move on. Our next presentation will be given by 
Dr. Jordan. Okay, Dr. Zhao, she is uh, specialized in the LIDAR application in forestry. Uh, so in his talk will be more about uh, for how to use LIDAR technology for the forest biomass estimation. So it's kind of uh, um, um, uh, quantitative indicators. Uh, yeah, and also, uh, yeah, yeah, Dr. Zhao is coming from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Okay, please. Okay, thank you, Professor Pang, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I'm Jordan from Aero, Aerospace Information Research Institute, Chinese Academy of Sciences. My topic is about the recent improvements of remote sensing-based forest or biogram biomass estimation in China. Uh, here is uh, 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 today's talk can be divided into two parts. So the first one is the China Biomass 2002 to 2020, and the second one is a uh, new trying. We call that non-destructive observ uh, non-destructive observations. Uh, first, I want to give a very short backgrounds. As public knows, uh, uh, existing carbon uh, sequestration is very important, and the forest is the largest terrestrial carbon pool in China. And as a result, accurate estimation of biomass is a very important basis for scientific carbon sequestration and sink enhancement. Uh, actually, I have um, carried out uh, biomass estimation research works for nearly more than 10 years. So in this, in these years, uh, we still found there are many, uh, many limitations in the, uh, in the biomass es uh, estimation. Uh, uh, for example, in, when we do the uh, regional, mon uh, 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 regional monitoring, we found that it is still difficult to improve the multi-source data fusion and the modeling accuracy. And also when we do the ground observations, it, it is difficult to reduce the uh, marine errors and uh, also difficult to improve the adaption of the allometric equations. So based on these uh, problems, China, Chinese government and the uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences has studied uh, many uh, carbon-related uh, projects. Uh, this project aims to develop a series of techniques, including the methodology of carbon budget estimation and the remote sensing models for monitoring, for monitoring the status of the carbon sequestration of China. And uh, our, our team undertaken uh, uh, several projects of it, uh, of them, and uh, and gained many uh, achievements. Mainly includes uh, land cover data based from 1990 to 2020, and uh, the second one is about ground biomass estimation using uh, high high spatial resolution data, lidar data, and scaling models. And uh, the third one is I just I. I uh, I just mentioned is the new method and equipment. Uh, this is the framework of the Chinese forest biomass estimation from 2000, 2000 to 2020. First, we estimate the ground biomass uh, 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 in the flight area based on field measurements and LIDAR data. And based on that, we estimate, uh, uh, estimate biomass in typical SAT site based on the uh, model combines Landsat and uh, LIDAR-based uh, biomass. And uh, we import crown height estimation based on calibrated space one LIDAR and uh, MODIS BRDF. And finally, we build a uh, biomass estimation model per district based on crown height MODIS vegetation indexes and uh, LIDAR and, and Landsat-based uh, biomass. Uh, here is the materials. Uh, China cover data is uh, uh, land cover data from 1990 to 2020. Uh, the resolution of the data from 1919, uh, uh, from 1990 to, 19, uh, to 2015 is, uh, uh, are 30 meters, and, uh, and then uh, 2015 and 2020 were 10 meters. And uh, we also, uh, to, to build the models in uh, in different di uh, districts we set uh, we set six typical forest sites in the in the whole china with uh, lidar and uh, very high resolution optical images uh, data acquired in 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 this start size 
And also we collected uh, ground sample data in 26 general forest start size to help to improve the uh, uh, SDA, uh, to improve the SDA and uh, estimation model in this district. Uh, first, uh, we 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 uh, in the flight area, we first uh, e uh, first e uh, e extracted uh, height and density parameters from lidar point cloud and build model combines field mirrored above ground biomass stand height, percentiles, ground densities, and then get the very high accuracy uh, uh, biomass in the flight area. And based on that, we combined the input from Landsat data and some other data like DM and uh, first types. We built the model, combined the HB result in the flight area with this input. And uh, to the to the canopy height, we we previously we used the canopy height uh, uh, calibration based on the LIDAR extracted tree height in the flight area and the, the, the uh, uh, and then we use the cali calibrated uh, uh, tree height in the glass footprint to uh, and the bonus BRDF to estimate the rasterized uh, canopy height and finally in each in each district we uh, first an analyzing tree uh, time series feature uh, uh, features of Mortis NUVI and EVIs to reduce the influence of the vegetation index's saturation and then build models based on the time series analysis in different first type with some other parameters. Uh, this is the final result of the, of the forest above ground by, uh, by mass from, two, from 2000 to 2015. In 2020, we collected more than 1,000 samples in uh, around 40 start sites to improve our models. And also, we input JEDI and Atlas data to promote forest canopy structure monitoring accuracy. Uh, until now, we, we just have the validation in uh, 2015 uh, with more than 5,000 5, valid, uh, validation points. And uh, the R square between the uh, estimate data and the observation data is near uh, is close to 0 uh, 0 0.6. The result shows, shows that the total forest above, above ground biomass of China in 2020 is about 22.75 uh, petagram. And after comparing it with the uh, 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 with the result from other researchers, we found that the remote sensing based estimations are generally larger than statistic uh, uh, statistic based me method because I think I think remote sensing could reflect more heterogeneity. And then uh, I want to talk about the we call that non destructive observations. Actually, this is a new uh, national uh, national research and development and a development pro uh, project uh, which lead by myself. We proposed a density multiply volume framework include many, uh, uh, include uh, several non-destructive observation techniques and equipment for above ground biomass estimation in forest and grassland. Here we just to, to talk about uh, forest. Uh, in this, uh, in, uh, in this framework, uh, uh, in this framework, we, uh, divide, we divided the biomass observation into two parts. One is the uh, above ground biomass density, and another one is the volume. And we use uh, multi frequency microwave uh, features to detect the biomass den density, and then we use multi angle scanning to detect the uh, volume. And then multiply the density with the volume, we get the uh, 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 accurate uh, individual tree biomass, uh, no, uh, non-destructive. 
Uh, to the biomass, den uh, uh, to the biomass density, uh, we first analyzing the, re the, re the relationship between the amplitude and the phase difference of multi-frequency microwave attenuation and the density of different tree species and the di and the diameter classes. And then we also uh, by uh, by uh, analyzing the variation of the tree trunk density in vertical direction with height and uh, diameter to build the vertical density distribution. Uh, uh, distribution model. Uh, that means when we want to uh, marry to 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 marry uh, the by the the, the uh, biomass density of a tree, we just need to uh, detect the density in just one position of the tree using our equipment, and then we uh, by this uh, with this model we can get the a uh, whole vertical density distribution of the tree. For the volume, uh, we use UAV and uh, uh, and some ground-based uh, scanning, uh, 3D scanning method to to re to 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 do that. Uh, first, we need to uh, uh, fill to to fill the uh, air ground multi sensor data. We we. After that, uh, we can uh, use this data to do some point cloud uh, separation, and uh, then we can reconstruct a three-dimensional model of the tree. And uh, after that, we can calculate the accurate uh, volume of, uh, from the from this model. Uh, actually, this uh, this project has been started. Uh, for half uh, for 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 half a year, we have uh, get several uh, primary improvement. So first, we divide, uh, we developed a live wood density analyzer with the tree parameter observation so software. Uh, with this uh, uh, with this uh, equipment uh, and uh, and the software, we have carried out uh, several observation experiment in the whole China. For example, in the Tibet, we have used our, we have used our uh, equipment and the software to, uh, to mirror the uh, DBH height and, and the biomass density of the spruce and uh, the pine trees. The result shows that the only uh, our uh, developed uh, software can get the DBH and the height very well. But the single frequency uh, detection equipment uh, still are not good enough to get the biomass, uh, uh, biomass density. I think based on the uh, uh, high accurate DPH uh, uh, and the height uh, mirroring software, uh, and then we can combine it with the UAV and the and some ground-based uh, scanning method, we can get very high accurate uh, volume. And uh, if we can, uh, uh, we can import multiple, um, uh, multi-frequency uh, microwave, I, th I think the biomass density could improve too. So here is a very, uh, very simple outlook. Uh, first, uh, no matter the regional monitoring or the ground observation, we we will import some very advanced uh, algorithms like deep learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, to the monitor of to the regional monitoring, we want to improve our our resolution because as uh, as previously uh, said, the land cover data in China has been uh, promoted into. Uh, 10 or 16 meters. Our biomass estimation also needed to uh, improve. So more regions and uh, even globally biomass observation uh, monitoring should be uh, should be uh, concerned. I think um, and to the to the uh, uh, biomass observation as uh, as I have just said, the multi frequency microwave and the multi sensor scanning should be uh, considered. Uh, perhaps in future, some new framework of biomass estimations should be uh, think about. For example, uh, now the 
uh, biomass estimation models in regional scale, it's difficult to expand to different temperate uh, to different years. So I think if we can combine some ecologic growth model, uh, I think the uh, multi, uh, uh, multi temporal biomass estimation should be improved. Okay, fine. Thank you. This is my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zhao. So we have, so we have time for a quick question. Maybe we just, I just realized we. <laughs> the point. Okay, so any questions? Okay, Jack, can you? Oh, okay. And thank you very much. It's uh, it was really interesting. And um, uh, you were presenting that you've used glass data mm -hmm. uh, in the past, and uh, and then Jedi data. Right. Um, have you yet incorporated the the carbon monitoring uh, satellite, uh, uh, Chinese carbon monitoring satellite, or are you planning to to do so? And um, uh, could you say a little bit about the difference in the in the density of footprints and maybe the size of the footprints that will maybe enhance your your estimates because of um, the um, yeah, the, the characteristics of the, of the mission um actually glass data is a uh, very old data right and uh, the i think the jedi data is just similar to glass data with a uh, similar footprint similar um, distance between the footprint and yeah yes uh, but uh, we 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 uh, uh, actually when we doing the uh, biomass estimation in 2020, we found that Atlas data uh, actually better than uh, JEDI data because JEDI data uh, was uh, usually uh, influenced by the ter terrain uh, too much, uh, and, and 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 it is uh, it is difficult to uh, correct the. A terrain influence to the JDI data. And uh, in China, you know, there are a lot of mountain in the south part. So yeah. And uh, when uh, when China has designed, designed the uh, recent carbon satellite, they not only use the uh, large footprint LIDAR uh, uh, sensors, they also improve the uh, they also import the very high resolution uh, images to rebuild the 3D model of the DSM of in the forest and then use this to uh, extract the uh, tree height. I think um, uh, about, the, uh, about some of the designment, I think uh, we are, we are, uh, we just use the Jedi and Atlas to compare their difference but we do not have any ideas about the uh, some design or yeah <laughs> thank you very much thank you thank you okay thank you so i think we have to move on to our last questions so uh, last presentation so okay, um, but after that we still if you have questions we still can discuss because tonight we, uh, they also have a city tour for some of uh, us i don't want you to missing i, I can ask you from there <laughs> yeah you 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 were mentioning um, airborne lidar mm -hmm. and i was wondering whether you know whether the either the the chinese government or any provincial government has got any plans to cover wall to wall the whole territory with urban lidar actually uh, now there are some pro some province have 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 carried out the whole okay. whole province scale yeah, yeah. wall to wall lidar okay. campaigns okay. but uh, just in several provinces because they cost a lot, of, a lot of money. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a big country. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. Yes, okay. Which uh, way? Oh, I'm lost. <laughs> no. no, I try to close. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, yeah, 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 it is there, but I cannot see here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try to close some there. Um, is that yeah okay here we go here we okay uh, thank you very much uh, I, 
Sorry for standing up in your way for, for refreshment. So I'll try to go quickly over my, my presentation. So I've been working uh, in collaboration with the uh, Chinese Academy of Forestry and Professor Pang Jong for the last eight years, and also Jackie Rosette from the University of Swansea, because, uh, well, we had uh, common goals and, and uh, we wanted to explore how the new technologies can offer more information or better information to support uh, forest planning, forest operations, forest monitoring in, the, in both countries. So I'm going to be talking about uh, what is the situation in the UK. I was going to do a quiz in here, but uh, I think we don't have the time. So, but uh, let, me, let me explain why I'm asking that. According to NASA, we've got something like uh, 422 trees per person allocated. You know, this is our quota. As a, as a global population. In the UK, we've got only 45. So the British government wanted to solve that and uh, is embarking on an ambition program of increasing uh, quite substantially the forest cover in the UK. In some of the, some of the areas, uh, this will mean almost doubling the amount of forest that are in the in the in those regions. Okay, so we're talking about Scotland. We're talking about a third of the of the of the country. But if we go to areas like uh, England, I mean, we're talking about 17 percent of the country, which might not mean a lot for certain countries, but uh, for a country as densely populated as England, well, uh, uh, especially England. That might be a lot of conflicts of interest in terms of uh, land use and the best way to combine forestry activities with other with other food production, industrial production, and uh, and uh, housing. Right. <clears throat> these these processes are also complicated by the fact that this is another matrix of complication that we are not only looking at uh, increasing the forest surface in the UK, but also we are trying to introduce new methods of uh, management that are more in line with what will be, or similarly as possible, with what will be a natural forest, okay? So we are progressively evolving from monoculture plantings to something like uh, will be continuous cover forestry or natural forest, etc. The problem is all our models, the models that have been, we have been developing for the last hundred years have been designed for, for uh, mon uh, monocultures. We have to start almost from scratch or find another methods to combine the knowledge encoded in those models and to adapt them to the new uh, situation, okay? That requires sometimes to go to a very fine level of detail and this is what I would like to explain in here. So a part of identifying how many trees you might have, there are other big questions. I have selected five, mostly because I'm biased towards uh, forest production. This is, this is my background. But other areas of interest, like ecology or, or, or uh, uh, flooding or managing risk or, or whatever, I mean, there's a large list of ex, uh, stakeholders might have other questions. The, everybody has got a W that is absolutely critical, okay? So I'm going to focus on these this five. Right, first of all, we need to know which species we've got and where do we have them. We have an, our national forest inventory, but, there are a lot of uncertainties when you are talking, when you're looking at uh, private land. About 45% of, uh, of the forest areas in, in, uh, in Britain are public. The other 55% is, uh, is a private hands. We don't always know what they are planting, what the species they, they've got, okay? So we need to find out for, by other means. And we are exploring ways of classifying this uh, species, trying to discriminate the species. So far, we are very good at the genus level, but not at the species. So we need to improve that. So this is an application developed uh, by some of my colleagues at uh, Forest Research that is combining satellite uh, imagery of different characteristics, uh, radar and uh, optical data. So we got about 90, 95% uh, accuracy at the genus level. The species level, well, it's still a long way to go. 
what is very interesting, and this is this is connecting with uh, what I was saying about uh, trying to get uh, uh, the larger amount of data at the highest level of detail, and this is coming from uh, national LIDAR programs in England and Wales. Scotland is still debating where to, to have this this uh, wall to wall LIDAR coverage. This is an example of uh, what we are doing with drones as well, and how we are extracting point clouds using uh, photogrammetric methods, and how we are combining, well, let me explain that. We are extracting uh, either by LIDAR data or by using, or in certain areas we, we use drone analysis, we can get uh, three-dimensional views of the forest cover. That for our foresters, is the closest they can get from reality. So just by visually assessing this data, they can get a lot of information and do some planning, okay? If we apply different techniques, we can discriminate trees at individual tree levels. So we can assign them an ID and create a tree list for all these, these areas. That would be probably too much, a kind of a data intoxication for the average manager, probably yes, but if we are able to repeat those measurements in time, especially when you were using drones, you can start thinking about trajectories of change of those trees, or at least parts of, of the forest, okay? So that will give us an, another way of trying to, get, to modify or adapt our existing models at that stand level and try to refine them to, com to allow for the combination of a species when you have a different different species, not only a monoculture, and also when you have different age types, okay? This data is combined with, uh, with uh, terrestrial laser scanning, and that, again, is a huge opportunity because we can get fully three-dimensional models of, uh, of trees. We can not only create trees, but also we can see, we can est provide the different estimates, you know, like stem profiles, we can get uh, canopy dimensions, we can get tree height, we can get deviates. Basically, the most fundamental variables that are being used in our models, okay? So the combination of uh, both techniques are quite powerful. Right? <clears throat> right. Okay, this is what I mean. So we can see trees from above, but we cannot see what is from below, okay, if we're using airborne systems only. In certain areas, if we combine that with, uh, this case, mobile laser scanning, we can see the whole uh, uh, tree profile, okay? Right. Also, we can create a better estimates of, uh, of volume in, uh, because we can reconstruct the stem profiles and uh, as the, the, my colleagues uh, from China were saying, you can classify branches and different parts of the, of the canopy. So you can start thinking about how biomass is distributed in each tree in across different species. And also you can start refining these models again, okay? Upscaling those results is a different discussion. I'm not going to get into that yet. Right. Then the next question is, uh, what, how can we monitor, I mean, this is, oh, let me see that. How can we monitor changes, especially when there, there are large disturbances in the, in the, in the forest? So in the, in the past, we explored uh, the, the, the adaptation of the time sync uh, tool that is being, uh, that is available in Google Earth Engine now. Okay, to look at the trajectories of change and monitor those uh, dramatic changes that will be associated with clear felling and also with wind damage. This is, uh, this is uh, an, another way of looking at uh, changes, uh, disturbances, is the classification of wind damage in the, the most recent storm that affected the, the, the east part of the country, is, is southeast of Scotland, northeast of uh, England. And, we were using a radar imagery to do that. We, we, select, we assigned some polygons that uh, we de had the highest probability of wind, wind damage, and we combined that with our LIDAR estimates obtained from the, from the National LIDAR program, and then we could provide a report to government about losses, volume loss in the different species and different areas. Right. Then we, we can start looking at... Uh, at uh, forest dynamics and uh, 
And uh, that is very interesting. Again, this is a new possibility using time series analysis of uh, satellite data. When you have satellite data, you, from a time perspective, you can start thinking about monitoring phenology, phenological cycles. You, you have a lot of signal in here, and then you can detrain those data sets, okay? Create a, what will be a seasonal trend, what will be a random effect, mostly uh, attached to, to problems with the, the instruments. And very interestingly, you can see positive, negative, or net zero trends in the in the canopy once once you have a uh, penological cycles you can extract different metrics like uh, the, the length of the growing season and the top of the growing season okay and that is very interesting this has been used by one of my students in in uh, ethiopia to look at uh, how the different different metrics compare to different land use classes and how they were changing in time that was a fantastic application in here, we were using a totally different approach. We were using a time series of data and we were using principal components, trying to model what would be the phenological cycles in the, each one, each pixel, and then looking at new acquisitions to look to model what would be, or, or try to detect what would be an anomaly based on the, on the distance or the difference between what the model will say and what the new acquisition is saying, okay? Well, if you look at the intensity of, uh, of this distance the, from the outliers, you can start thinking about dramatic changes like a completely uh, a structural destruction of the, the forest has been clear fell or has been uh, wind damaged or has been burned, basically has disappeared, or very important, you can monitor the onset of different pests and diseases. And then this is when people, when foresters on the ground, can start doing something about that. This is where they can implement uh, some techniques that can be, that successfully can uh, stop uh, this, this problem, okay? That is an opportunity that uh, is very interesting because satellites, there are millions of satellites now, there is a lot of images and we can have daily images. If we're thinking about planet, for example, we've got two images anywhere in the country every day. So we can detect as soon as possible any any problem. Right, this is a, another another uh, work that uh, we're doing with uh, with a student, with Jackie, and myself, and uh, is part of uh, of this Dragon Five project. We are looking at uh, at uh, how different clones will be reacting or different different provenances will be reacting to drought stress. You will see the different behavior of uh, some of them. And that is giving us, this is under control uh, experiment in a polytunnel, but the idea is to upscale these results and uh, start doing a, a, a large phenotyping program that will allow us to not only select the best species for each location, but also to, to tender them properly, you know, to, to see what are the critical values we should be taking care of and also managing the, the, the forest in a much better way. Because we must consider that, uh, at least in Britain, any new afforestation program is, a, is, a, is not a lifetime, but at least a one generation uh, investment. You better do it properly and you better take care of it because having a second opportunity is a, is a big mistake, okay? So you have to do it right, right from the very beginning. All the countries uh, might be, well, it would take three generations if you go to, to Scandinavian countries. I mean, if the, 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 every decision is, it takes three generations to, to produce something. So it's, uh, you must be even more careful there. Right, Mo monitoring uh, forest and dynamics very quickly. When we are looking at uh, trees, we are looking at living entities. So they are dynamic entities. They change over time. They grow, they die, they grow in different ways. They respond to climatic uh, stressors. They respond to, to abiotic or biotic uh, stressors. There's something going on all the time. This is, these are two applications we did. One is to monitor directly this is a paper uh, did uh, ages ago with uh, with a, a guy in uh, in the University of Ohio, 
and we were looking at a, at a canopy delineation of a lighter data and, uh, and uh, using different lighter acquisitions, see the trajectories of change, of growth, or, or how they were dying, of different dominant types. Then this is another application uh, looking at uh, how, how can we use this uh, canopy delineation as a baseline data for uh, individual tree growth models. And this is very interesting because we can see this is Sid Casprus, okay? And uh, combined with a Canadian model called TAS, we can see the trajectories of change of every individual in the canopy in two scenarios. One is business as normal, and two, that was a product of uh, wind damage that affected partially some of those plots. And the, the trajectories are completely different in terms of uh, carbon allocation in different parts of, uh, of the canopy and, uh, and in total, okay? So getting accurate data to, to run, uh, to, to be used as a baseline uh, data to run models at a high level of resolution and monitoring changes all the time to change these baseline observations can give you a very good estimate of uh, what you should be getting in the future, okay? And you can take decisions about that. This is uh, again another another idea. You are getting uh, you are get you are getting models, lidar based models based on top height. Okay, you calculate basal area and volume, and um, what would be the likely situation in a few years time? This case, this case, ten years time, and that will be reviewed every every year or every few, few months by new acquisitions of data that they will monitor the canopy cover in there. Right, finally, that is, uh, that is fine, but also it would be interesting to have to develop our own capabilities as a forest service to fly at will, to capture data at will. With uh, the, the drones, we can get, uh, well, an area, legally speaking, in the UK, 500 meters around us. Okay, but there is a possibility to uh, to get a protocols that, that if are, are approved will allow us to cover large areas with uh, with our drones. Okay, so we are we are collaborating with a company in Scotland that is designing this uh, this uh, fixed wing uh, uh, planes, and uh, for example, just just to illustrate the the possibilities that uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, urban systems can do. Nobody is using their space in Britain between two o'clock and uh, maybe five o'clock in the morning at the 100, 120 meters height. You can fly entire districts with LiDAR and you can do that again and again and again at very, re very reduced cost, okay? So you can capture huge amounts of data every year you know probably you can monitor growing seasons with that and this is enormous possibility okay because all the analysis can be automated you can process vast volumes of data and and see how are the forest dynamics in the your forest district also you can combine this is uh, again i mean uh, the people at CAF are, are using uh, the LIGI system. We, we, we've got another system that is a headwall system that combines LIDAR with uh, hyperspectral. So the combination of uh, structural and optical data can create a very po powerful combination. Okay? And I'm going to leave it in there. Thank you very much. And sorry for keeping you <laughs> here. Okay? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Juan. So, any questions, Juan? I think it's very, very specific and a very nice work. Okay, please. Thank you for your presentation, very interesting. I, I'm just curious here, and maybe this question has been answered before, but I looked at your slide when we were using indices that were created many, many years ago, like NDVI and whatnot, and now we have yeah. saturated with data, data with much higher spatial resolution, um, temporal resolution and whatnot. Are there any new indices out there? Because I mean, we can be moving forward with so much data, but not really utilizing the, what we have gotten from the data point of view to start having more precise indices that we can actually differentiate from species and yeah. applying the lighter data on the ground, the UVA and whatnot. But are there new indices that we 
are producing or is it a little bit of a stagnation on, on that side? Sorry, I, I don't understand. The, the last part was that I'm wondering if scientists like yourself and the scientific community is utilizing the new data to have indices that actually better depict what's on the ground instead of using NDVI that was created many, many years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we have much better data, much higher resolution, exactly, spatial, exactly, spectral, and exactly, all that. Exactly. Potentially with new indices, we can have better results. Is this yeah. happening or is this something that is a, yeah. a area that we need we, to think about? And we are, I mean, there, 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 are, there are a few possibilities here. I mean, if you look at the the volume of a multi uh, hyperspectral data cubes are huge. Are you going to use all this information? No, no, you don't use that. <laughs> okay, but there are um, the, uh, uh, different parts of the spectrum that are quite interesting and they are, they, are, they are relevant for what you are monitoring. Okay, you should be able to detect that and construct or fine tune. Uh, miniaturized uh, sensors that will only capture this information. Okay, this is what we are trying to do. So we are we are doing a, a lot of polytunnel experiments. We are trying to look at uh, the the relevant part of the uh, of the spectrum and and uh, see whether we can just capture five or six bands in different combinations that are, we are going to use. I don't want to have uh, data that they, that, that they are terabytes and terabytes and uh, not be able to use on not even one percent of uh, what is in there. Okay, this is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which microphone? Yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, coming back to to the these these are indexes that have been in the literature for for a long time. You know, people know that, but there are other indexes you can create by looking at any particular process. Okay, so we're doing metabolomic analysis, for example, and trying to establish a link between uh, what will be a metabolite that is being generated under part in that particular species under particular stressor, especially pathogens, and see whether we can detect that. And then we will create sensors, maybe ground-based sensors that will be able to, to detect that. Okay, so this is, is this a, is this an uncharted land in many ways. Okay, but uh, I think this is the way forward because otherwise we're capturing a lot of data that perhaps somebody will use in the future, but that will be, that will be a lot of information. We will get intoxicated, and, uh, but I don't even try to get uh, this, this kind of data to our foresters in, on the, in, the, in the districts because they don't know what to do with that. Okay. And, and, and even, I mean, some time ago, I, I remember using uh, hyperspectral data to map seagrasses, and that's a challenge on its own. So we had to exactly do this, find the exact wavelength yeah. where it depicts seagrasses with yeah. the water column on top of it, extract yeah. it. Okay, there's a publication, but that just sits in somebody's like shelf. It's not out there to say, this is probably what you should be using part yeah. of the spectrum instead of digging through the entire hyperspectral length, yeah. length wavelength. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then we probably should have gone a step further and say, okay, maybe think about some indices yeah, that yeah. you can create, but the research stopped there. There was no more money to implement more. So yeah. there you go, you stop at that level. Yeah. And, and didn't really progress to anything else, although we all know, especially people in the wetlands yeah. community, the mapping seagrass is a challenge and we're still not doing yeah. all that great. So, so that's why I was wondering, are we moving forward? What's needed? I mean, this is yeah. that, yeah. I mean, such issues are identified, <coughs> countries are struggling as well. So what could be done? Should we think yeah. kind of move forward with this instead of- Well, I, I remember a very interesting conversation about four or five years ago at the University of Glasgow with some people from the optical engineering department, they were creating these filters for the, for grading the, the, the signal. And they say, if you tell me you, you only need that part of the spectrum, we'll do that for you. That costs that cost a lot, no, nothing, very little. So it's, it's, it's possible to do that. Yeah, we, we sometimes are not connecting the right, the right people. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, because the, 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 the last question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because the question. Yes, thank you. Presentation. I just want to know, uh, do you have some current research combined UAV, LIDAR, and hyperspectral data combined together? Because that's the last... Uh, we are starting now. We are starting now. We got this this uh, sensor relatively recently, but also we had the pandemic in the middle and things like that. Now we are we are going to the field, and uh, I've got a student, PhD student, that is working on that. Okay, she's going through the nuts and bolts of uh, trying to link both data sets. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Jackie has got the similar system in in, uh, in Swansea, so we've got two of them. And uh, she's trying to do other experiments. So this year we're going to do some field data collection, and we are going to work uh, on the combination. Okay, that doesn't mean that every point in the point cloud will have all these bands of data. Okay, but we should be because the sensors are radically different. One is a push room, and the other one is, is a lidar. Okay, so but we will try to 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 see what uh, we can do in terms of combination. Okay, at the moment we are exploring. <laughs> Yeah, okay, thank you again, Juan. Yeah. Okay, so now we go, uh, we almost uh, approaching for the close of this session. So uh, thank you very much for coming, and I also so uh, yeah through this uh, all this uh, five presentation. I think uh, through for the for the data for the method from for the large scale or very specific scale. I think it bring some of uh, uh, concepts and ideas and you know, how we can use the remote sensing data. Yeah, how can you use remote sensing technology to characterize of our forests, you know, both across uh, time scales and also across the different uh, spatial scales. I think this brings some of our thinking. And uh, for this session, it focus uh, more on uh, our contributions from uh, our China work and also some of our international corporations. But in the future, we want to, uh, I think there'll be much more opportunity to get more involved in this communication, uh, involved in this, in, in this commu uh, community. And also, uh, so you guys are wel welcome to China and also we want to get more involved in, in the GFI community from both of these uh, data, method, uh, even code. So you can try to, to make more con uh, contribution and also to make this forest resource monitoring more transparent. Okay, so thank you. Thank you all the audience and also all our, our, our uh, uh, lecturers. Okay, thanks. Okay, I see.